Hi guys and welcome back to my sixth video on the HP Spectre X360-15, the new to 2020 model. I have made a few videos, if you haven't seen those I've tried to answer as many questions as I could that people have been leaving in the comments, so feel free to have a browse. Um, today I am going to try and answer the questions about um, heat and temperature and fans um, when this device is working under pressure. So to do that I'm going to use a couple of programs, uh, Unigene, which will hopefully give us an indication of the GPU and how that's performing, and then Cinebench for the cores, the CPU. So stay with me and hopefully this will be of some use to you guys. It's probably going to be more use to people who are very familiar with um, comparing various laptops and please leave your thoughts in the comments. Unfortunately this may be the last video I'll be doing for a little while as my um, laptop honeymoon is coming to an end and I'm going to have to go back to work tomorrow so yeah all good things must come to an end. But there's always evenings and weekends so might have time to do a few short ones we'll see. I'm not going to repeat the specs on this but uh, have a look at the CPU stats that I'm putting up here if you want to get the details as I'm clicking through them. Hopefully this is going to be big enough for you to see. So just a quick look at the temperatures when this thing is idling. I have the screen on full brightness but I haven't been doing any intensive work yet just browsing the internet. Temperatures there are a comfortable 37, 38, 39 degrees which is quite normal for idling. This is the HP command center and you can see there's three different settings for the thermal profile. You can have uh, HP recommended which optimizes your system performance and temperature. You can have performance option which is ideal for software that requires heavy use of the CPU. And then you have a comfort setting which is ideal for situations where the device feels warm to the touch. We can see the stats for this simulation which is uh, 1080p so it's a kind of a medium uh, setting for the graphics card and we have it on the best performance that this uh, PC can offer with the HP control settings and best performance with the battery. So I'm going to run the test and unfortunately the uh, counters at the top right hand corner are absolutely tiny so I've had to magnify them quite a bit. I ran this test three times so I have magnified the three results and put them all over onto the one screen. So uh, this is the simulation starting now and you will see coming up on the top right hand corner once it's loaded, the uh, GeForce GTX 1650 Ti with Max Q design, and then you can see the details and temperature is sitting at 67 degrees at the moment whilst running through this. And the card is being utilized at 99%, so it's getting pushed to the max here, almost. Now coming up at the top left hand side are the same set of statistics, only these were done. Uh, this same benchmarking was ran in uh, 4K with the best performance settings. Um, you can see that it's not getting the same frames per second or anywhere close. Uh, temperature's hovering around 72 degrees at the moment and it is at 100% utilization. And then coming up at the bottom, left hand corner of the screen, are the results for running the same test again, but this time in the HP recommended optimized uh, settings for performance and temperature um, on uh, 1080p medium settings for the graphic card. I hope this is all making sense. You can see on the bottom left hand one that the temperature is only 69, it's 68, 69, 70 degrees I think it goes up to and it doesn't go above that so the optimized settings do help to keep the GPU cool but obviously you're not going to get quite the same performance. Uh, the top right hand uh, stats are the best for performance and um, heat management. 77 degrees, 78 degrees I think is the max that it goes up to and uh, once this benchmark has finished running you'll be able to see the results and compare on the leaderboard. Um, my expertise do not go as far to know whether this is suitable for you gamers out there. I will leave that up to you guys to decide. But the temperature didn't peak for the GPU over 78 degrees which is completely within the normal and acceptable par parameters. So here we have the results, 6090, 32.88 frames per second minimum, average 45.55, maximum 
maximum temperature 78 degrees and it's currently sitting at 71 now that it's finished and it's cooling of course and um, here's the leaderboard let me see if i can scroll around to whereabouts we fit in on the leaderboard and uh, you can have a look and see how it kind of fits in with other examples there This is the temperature now, 60 degrees, a couple of minutes later. Um, and there you can see our two tests that were ran, ran and the temperature maximum 78 degrees there. That's what it went through on that uh, benchmark simulation. Here's the results for the same simulation in 4K. It's only 2639 on the leaderboard, which is rubbish, really. And they are the um, core temperatures just after finishing that simulation so you can see that they are coming down it get hot but it's been pushed pretty hard and um, I have to say during all of these tests the fans were going at full speed so take from that what you will so maximum temperatures reached for the cores is 100 minimum 50 or 40 and sort of sitting around 70 80 90 so moving on to Cinebench then where I will do a CPU uh, test a couple of tests um, one is the cores all together and then the second one is the single cores so I'm going to try and arrange my screen here so we can see as much as we can whilst this is performing so this is basically going to uh, get the laptop to render um, at maximum capacity now you have to bear in mind when I did this I did have a couple of other things running obviously the um, the video to record the screen and uh, various recording devices ongoing. So I'm gonna run both the tests. I'm gonna try and show you as much information as I can whilst that's going. So that's it rendering in the background quite fast because it's going all cores together. And the temperatures are down in the bottom right for the cores. I don't know if you can see them without me zooming in. I'll do a little bit of zooming there. So we can see the temperatures are getting high and the fans are going. Whether that's an acceptable level or not, um, you guys are going to have to tell us that. But you can see the load is at 100%. So this uh, laptop is absolutely going to the max as much as it possibly can. The GPU is at 64 degrees. <laughs> Nobody really knows what the ideal temperature is, or maybe somebody does. Maybe someone can stick in the comments when your PC is absolutely maxed out, what should the core temperatures be? Uh, I've read that it shouldn't really go above 95, however this does tend to go above 95, albeit that would not be an average temperature, so I think the average when it's doing this is probably around about 80 or so. Um, and unfortunately that little core temperature thing doesn't actually give us the average, it gives us a minimum and maximum. So here's the results for the multi-core test. No it's not, it spoke too soon, where's the results for the... here we go. Um, so 2,232 points and maybe you can see there where we were ranked on that list. So 
hopefully when you're watching this on a bigger screen than I'm watching on, on this now, uh, you'll be able to see um, the temperatures in real time whilst it went through that test. So uh, this is the next one, this is the single core test. And again bearing in mind I'm running running video software and other bits of software in the background so it's um, on the task manager you can see it's not just one single core working there, there's other bits and pieces going on in the background but just to give you an idea of temperature and as I said fans were on for most of this, most of the time running these tests. And I'm going to skip some because this is really boring. I'm boring myself and the sound of my voice is boring me to tears. So I'm going to jump through this single core test and get us to the end results here. And here we have it, the end results. Oops, there we go. 2232 points again, rendering single core 439 points. So, temperatures at the end of that have fallen back down quickly enough. Uh, maximum temperatures are saying 98 degrees whilst doing that test. And then here, once I'd finished recording the screen, I decided to move the file across to my phone so I could edit a bit better on phone software. Weird, but that's what I do. And there's the temperatures of the cores whilst transferring the files after a lot of activity. So you guys decide, what do you think of the temperatures? Um, discuss in the comments. You guys all help each other out. I have to go back to work. See you all another time. Bye.